Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to my YouTube channel. So for today's video, I will be sharing with you a beginner's guide to OneNote. What are the basic things you should consider and on how you can print your notes from this note-taking app. I will share what I've noticed and some tricks on using OneNote since I've used this already for quite some time and I think I have adequate knowledge to share some stuff about this app. And yes, without further ado, let's jump right into the video. But before we dive right into the video, I want to share about this app first. So this is the Wondershare eJaw Mind, formerly known as MindMaster. This is under their eJaw suit on which they also have eJaw Max, eJaw Proj, and more. So this is a cross-platform supported app which means it offers complete flexibility and is available to download and use online and on mobile devices. It is available for Windows, macOS, Linux, Android, iOS, and online. Basically, eDrawMind is a collaborative mind mapping tool wherein you can simplify concepts, brainstorm ideas, take notes, plan projects, and more. Its feature consists of brainstorming, presentation, and real-time collaboration with your team. It consists of a variety of templates that you can use. Now I will share with you a brief overview of each feature. So first is their brainstorm mode. Here you have to write down first the terms or ideas that you will use in your mind map. So this will help you avoid forgetting a key term that you should include. And you can also assign a color code and start typing the additional information you want to add. Then you can place the main idea and topics of the mind map you're currently working on. Once you're done, drag the terms or words into their correct places. You can also move them around based on where you want them to be placed. Then just exit by clicking on the icon below. They also have a variety of designs and options that you can apply to the mind map. The next feature is their presentation mode. This allows you to present your mind map without going through the PowerPoint editing process. But here you can definitely export it to a PowerPoint file type if you want. So here in eDraw Mind, they have two options to present the slideshow option and traverse option for the slideshow option click on the slideshow tab then the auto create option and this icon and with that you can present the different parts of your mind map the third feature of eDraw mind is the real-time collaboration and this is only available for web versions this enables you to collaborate with your team anywhere on any device, which will allow you to make your work continuous. If you have already created a mind map on the app, you can save it on your personal cloud, then log into your eDraw Mind account on the web. And once you access it, go to the cloud tab and choose the mind map you saved a while ago. Click the share button at the right top corner and you can now share the link to the mind map with your group members and with that you can directly collaborate. Lastly, they have this user generated template center where various mind map templates are readily available. There is a template community both online and on the desktop app. You can find them on the mind map gallery tab of the app. Search for the template you want. Click on it, then click the duplicate button. With that, you can now edit the content based on the topic you're currently working on. So if you want to try Wondershare eDraw Mind, I think this is very useful for school, especially you tend to learn more by using mind maps. I have a link to it below in the description box. Go check it out if you want to try this too. And yes, that is all for this app. Now we will proceed to the video. OneNote is a note-taking app which I've been using for a while and I'm using the OneNote 2016 version. I will link below the Microsoft's website to where you can download the app. So the first thing that I will share with you is some of the basic stuff or beginner's guide for OneNote. In making a OneNote notebook, just click on Add Notebook and I suggest that you save it on your OneDrive account. You can make a folder first so that you will be organized, then add a notebook name. You can base it on what subject you're planning to make 
notes, then click the Create button. You can also customize it. Click on the Properties option and choose the color you want for the page cover. You can edit the notebook name as well, then just click the OK button. Here on OneNote, you can add sections for your notebook and rename it based on how you would divide your notebook. You can set it as per grading, like first to fourth grading, so this depends on you. And by the way, you can also set a color for that specific section. Before making your notes, I suggest that you first make a template. So to do that, go to the View tab and choose the paper size you will use for that subject. In this case, I chose the B5 size since I also printed my notes on a B5 loose leaf paper. Then adjust the page margins. You can copy mine if you will also use a B5 paper. You can also choose if you want to show the page title or not. And under the rule lines option, we have here in a line or grid form, but I will just leave this blank since I will print mine on a dotted paper. You can also apply a page color or leave it as it is. If you choose to show the page title, you can add the topics chapter or lesson number and then add the lesson title. In my case, I still add the title of the lesson, then I will change its font to 40, use the red color, and change the font size to 22. All of these are optional. The fonts or colors, it depends on you. And under it, you can add your notes. So I use the bunch script for the font with a 10.5 font size and apply a dark blue font color. So this will be the template for our notes. So to set it, go back to the paper size option and then click on the save current page as a template. Add a name and set it as a default template for that section. Then click save. And with that, you can add a page and start making your notes. Here in OneNote, you can add some highlighters on those important terms. They have here a variety of highlighter colors. You can also apply the basic styles like darkening the text, applying italicize, and underlining them. Also, make use of the different bullet designs for your notes. You can just click on the asterisk key and shift on your keyboard to place a bullet directly. And you can add some numbers or letters in stating your notes. You can easily move the text on a page and also by moving the bullet, it will show you another design of it. They have here a variety of designs that you can choose from. So if you want to add another column for your notes, you can just click anywhere on the page and start adding or typing your notes. Then just align it to the first column on the page. Also here on OneNote, you can add a table. Click on the tab key on your keyboard, then just type your notes. So to proceed to the next column, just click the tab key again. Repeat this as many times as you want. You can also easily adjust its size. To proceed to the next row, press the enter key and click on the tab key to go to the next column. You can also add shading for a box or the cell. Just right click on it, then click table then the shading option. And with that, that is how you can basically add a table on OneNote. You can also add a photo on your page from your teacher's PowerPoint or from Google. So here you just copied one from Google and pasted it on OneNote. You can also move it anywhere and resize it. The only issue here is that you cannot crop the image, but I just use my snipping tool to crop it. Then I just paste the screenshot photo to my page. Also, by adding the photo inside this kind of boundary, the light gray lines, you cannot place the image beside a text since it will occupy the whole line. So to address that issue, you have to separate the photo from your notes. Just like here, it has its own kind of gray boundary. I'm not really sure of how it is called, so sorry for that. Another thing to remember in making notes here in OneNote is that your notes should not go beyond your page. Avoid overlapping your notes and letting them or placing them on the gray portion because you cannot print the specific page correctly if this happens. 
make sure it will not overlap on any side especially at the bottom and on the left or right side so if it does overlap proceed to the next page and continue adding your notes here in the insert tab you can add a table through here and add some file attachments or just drag it directly to your page then choose the option you want to apply. Usually, I just use the attached file and I do this if there are times that I didn't include some parts of a PDF or PowerPoint to my notes. I can just easily access it by clicking the file. You can also add some equations, symbols, and a date or a time on your notes. Another feature is that you can annotate your notes. You can maximize its usefulness, especially if you have a drawing tablet, a tablet or an iPad. So it will be much more easier and comfortable for you to annotate. So they also have here this lasso tool. You can also check the spelling of a term or search something within the OneNote app. Or you can see the thesaurus feature. Another feature that I like in this app is its new docked window option where you can open another window of OneNote and this is useful if you're fixing your draft notes and on the other window you will open a page and you can place here the organized or fixed notes so they also have here this new quick notes option. Next is that you can access it on any of your devices. So just make sure that you save your notebook on your OneDrive account. You can sync your notes from your laptop to your tablet or iPad, then access them anywhere and anytime. Now I will share with you how you can print your OneNote notes in bulk. Again, make sure your notes didn't go or overlap to the gray area and it still have a border on all sides. So I will print this one to show you guys how it works. So press and hold the control key on your keyboard and while you're holding it, select the pages you're planning to print. So in this case, select first the odd pages like 1, 3, 5, 7 and so on. Then click on the control P on your keyboard and you can now click print. Just repeat the process to the remaining pages and this time choose the even pages. In a while, I will show you the actual printing process. So here I will use my B5 dotted paper and in placing your paper on the printer, make sure that the holes are on the right side. Then choose the pages you will print. But in this case, I will just print two pages. Then after that, wait for it to finish. Flip the paper and this time the holes are on the left side of the printer. Then I will just choose here the even pages. And this is how my notes look like. So after that, I will just place it on my binder. And if you're wondering where I bought this, I will link it also below in the description box for you to check it out. I add here in this binder my major subjects like biology and physics. So I will just place here my printed notes. And yes, this is how I basically print my notes on a B5 size paper. And yes, that is all for today's video guys. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you enjoyed this one. So if you did, give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe if you want to subscribe. And yes, that is all. Thank you so much guys for watching and see you on my next video. Bye guys!